My motto, or my mission, if you will, is that whistling is an idea whose time has returned. Whistling must have been, of necessity, the first musical instrument. It's almost like it's in plain sight, but people have forgotten it. I guess because I whistle like a bird, I'm under the category as a bird whistler. It makes me happy that they called me back. It's like we're commun I'm communicating with the birds. I don't really understand what they're saying. I mean, I didn't translate it yet, but I know what this means. I translated that in English. It means I don't want to die. I've always had crosses my whole life. You know, life is one big cross. Maybe that's why I like to whistle. People say to me, what do you do? Now, you know, I've retired from 35 years in the advertising business to whistle full time. You want to grab a chair with we'll, we'll Mike Yub? Steven, welcome. You are really good. You're not just good, you're, of course, the international grand champion whistler, but obviously there was a point at which you realized you were, like, maybe the best whistler who was ever born. I started whistling at seven, and there are whistling competitions. So there's, a, there's an annual uh, competition in Lewisburg, North Carolina. I've been competing down there for 10 years. My dream for the art of whistling is that there are invitations to the orchestras of the world, like a Pablo Casals might get with his cello. You know, I'm always trying to figure out how to advance another step. Okay. I think the gentleman wore this sort of thing every day to dinner. Good luck. Have later. fun. Daddy, go bye-bye now, okay? Well, a week from now, I'll be going back to Lewisburg. You know, this is the 31st annual and um, I, my intention is to recapture uh, my title of international grand champion. I won in 2002. Um, last year I missed out by two points, one in classical and one in popular. I do know that there will be a returning four-time grand champion. His name is Chris Allman. You know, he's the one to watch out for, I suppose, but you, know, you never know, somebody could show up who just blows everybody's doors off.
right? If you blow just the right amount, it jumps up an octave. But my lips are getting so fat in my old age. The day will come when I will no longer be able to puculate. I will lose my puculatory prowess. I've been to the doctors about my lungs. One says I have chronic bronchitis, the other says asthma, another one says emphysema, and then there's asbestos. So we go to Sinai Hospital in Miami, have them punch a hole. The doctor there says, well, there's nothing malignant, but I wanted to ask you about your lungs. What do you do? I said, I don't do anything. I'm sometimes a realtor, sometimes a boat captain, sometimes an entertainer. He says, oh no, you do something with your lungs. I have never seen, and I've been doing these for 25 years, a person your age with, with such lung capacity. So I told him about the whistling and he told me, don't ever give it up. I've had several divorces. I've had friends die. I'm living in Key West. I've had many friends die. I've lost everything th thrice due to hurricane events. What you can produce with your pucker or with your tongue and palate, it gives me a way to put unsavory things out of my thoughts and get back into the quantum mechanics of it all. It comes down to what's in this, what's in this leaf, what's in the space that's in between the atoms and the neutrons. It's all floating. It's all part of the universal energy. You know, it may feel solid, but it isn't. Nothing is. The judges recommend that you dress in proper attire for each category. And so hopefully when I get there, they will appreciate my wearing a set of tails. And the, the plantation shirt for summertime and the French outfit for under Paris skies. When you pack a tuxedo, you do like everything. You just throw it in the thing. I've come to learn in my short life that uh, anything that won't come out of the dryer ready to wear, I don't need. And I am all ready for Lewisburg International Whistlers Convention, where I will be the champion, indubitably. That's the whistler's call, and he knows it all. So remember that he's checking on you. Back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, maybe even into the 50s, you had whistlers accepted as musical artists. You had well-known professional whistlers traveling with the big bands and taking their turn. You know how the trumpet players stand up and they do their thing and then they sit down and the clarinet players stand up and they do their thing? Well, a whistler would come out in front of the band. People like Elmo Tanner, who traveled with uh, the Ted Weems Orchestra in Crosby. He's a warbler. You had uh, Fred Lowry, the blind whistler, Muzzy Marcelino. You know, these were all whistling greats. That's why I call that the golden age. Then it just kind of vanished.
I never whistle in the office. People are focused, and when you have tens of billions of dollars at stake uh, on any particular deal, it, 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 it's risky. Miss Armitage, greetings. Are you not happy? Oh, no. Uh, as I like to say, I'm one bad quote away from losing my job. Yeah. Chirac was putting pressure on Berlusconi to put pressure on Finn Mechanica to work with Snecma rather than Carlisle. And we got that story written. Not yes. so much you and me, but rather yeah, no, that. Absolutely. We'll make sure that they get plenty of Oh, yeah, bank. no, I will. That, that's the beauty of this. Do you yeah. feel that we've got the situation in Japan under control? with the A distraction so. such as whistling uh, is, uh, is viewed as just a nuisance because yeah. whistling in the office generally annoys people, <laughs> which is not a good thing to uh, curry favor with your colleagues. When I actually leave the office, then there's a chance to just do what I want. So it wasn't until I went to Lewisburg that I found my brethren. I'm the four-time champion, and no one has won it five times. So my hope is to become the winningest whistler ever. That means I appreciate it, everybody. I'm going to enter the whistling tournament for the grand champion. I found out about it through my cousin. He saw Steve Herps on TV on CBS. He goes, you think you're good? I said, I'm the best. I'm the best whistler in the world. Ha 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 ha! Self-proclaimed now. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how good you are. So, you know, that's why I entered it. This is the first time I visited the United States. I never whistled for other people. I never performed with it. From home to here, 28 hours. 28 hours. I love whistle. I loved it. Lewisburg, North Carolina is the mecca for whistlers. You know, it is the world capital of whistling, as it were. And it's not like a hug column no. contest and, uh, sure. because you have to whistle popular music, classical music. If you want to be in the top of the whistling world, you have to go to Lewisburg. I'm guessing center point. I was waiting for somebody to tell me. Yeah, just one mic. Uh, it'd be a wireless mic. Side. Streets of Laredo, Red River Valley, and uh, uh, Get Along Little Doggy, and I wore Just a, a medley, so I wore yeah, a 10-gallon yeah. cowboy hat. I'm going to run in there. Okay. I'm up. Okay. okay. Show us. Thanks. And the classical? Classical is called Bandits, singular possessive, Gallop. As far as the schedule goes, we've... Yeah, I'm ready to rock. I know most of the competition except for the newcomers. And newcomers usually you just blow out of the water because they're new, they don't know what they're doing, they're not as good as they think they are. Cool. Yeah. And how did you bring anyone with you here? Yeah, my wife. Oh, your wife came too? Oh, well, good. May I have a picture with you too? Oh, yeah. Oh, all right, here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank Is it you. Kurt? How do you pronounce it? Your name? Kurt. Kurt. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's a new uh, competitor, first time, named uh, Kurt from the Netherlands. Steve Herbst is a perennial tough competitor. The competition is exceptionally I'm stiff. Close, but I'm doing a concert in Cold Spring. Well, the guy's name that I can't pronounce from Holland is quite amazing. Um, Chris Ullman and uh, our friend Steve Herbst have both been here before, and they've both won. Yeah. Steve Herbst. Hi, I'm here to do. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How do you present Geert? Yeah, that's Geert. pretty good. Geert. Geert. <laughs> Geert? <laughs> Almost. I guess you're not up for the guy who traveled the farthest. There's an award for who comes the farthest, you know. But that's yeah. probably the guy from Taiwan should be getting yeah, that. Have you heard him yet? Oh, I missed it. 
I, I didn't speak to you before. Hi, to see you. He, he actually might win for who's, who came the furthest to perform. Oh, I, I don't I know. I don't know. That's not true. Well, I live in Milo. That's in the south of Holland. Most of the time I'm not conscious of, of whistling, I guess. But uh, the fact that I'm not conscious, I can't tell you, so... I work in a crisis home or crisis house. People with severe psychiatric problems, they can come to us for one week. And in a meeting at work, uh, a serious meeting, I can suddenly start whistling. People in Holland think whistling is just you do when you walk on the street or washing the dishes and that's it. It's not normal to whistle everywhere uh, because other people don't. Dankjewel. Ja, dank je hetzelfde. My mom and dad said I started whistling at about four. I've got this teacher here from Menon. And she asked me uh, very uh, precisely, so, here, stop whistling. Okay, and within a minute I started whistling again. So, um, uh, well, well she, she, she asked my parents to come to school and, and, and talk about it. it. It was a problem. Excuse, there is a broodje or a croissantje. Well, it's still a problem. I once whistled at a funeral. That's so not done. So when I told people uh, in my surrounding that I would go to Lewisburg to the World Champion uh, Convention, uh, the Whistling Convention, they really thought I, I was crazy. First time whistlers back here. Well, first time contestants. All right, you need this page here, which says guidelines for whistling contestants. It has underneath that suggestions for first-time whistlers. The judges have coded figures or names or numbers. They don't know among themselves who is saying what. They don't see each other's papers. They don't congregate and decide, did you like him, did you like her? However, 25% of your grade is on your performance. Three different people double check those scores to see that they are accurately added. And then if you're in the finals, as maybe as many as ten of you men will be, then you've got to have some new songs. By now you should have it all memorized. Yeah. Four minutes for popular, five minutes five for classical. Five minutes for classical. Yes. I've got a CD with accompaniment music. Yes. Uh, where do I leave it? Right. Should I give that's, it now? That's or? Gage, when you see that your name is getting close. Okay. All right. Um, now, like, say, if you mess up and it's a short classical, like two-minute classical, can you do another one to make up the five minutes? The question was... In round one... When you're adjudicating, we're looking for more than just melody. Can they add some trills and oodles and some of the characteristic nuances that, that are akin to whistling? Um, the vibrato, that it, uh, it comes in. A vibrato is, it, in voices is straight down. Ah, ah, puts a little heart in the thing. When a whistler puts vibrato on a tone, it can come in different ways. What it is, is it, it's a chewing of the sound. So if I were to go If I had a whistle now Straight We'll accept that as class. Oodles. The bird whistlers get their sound by oodling. Oodle, 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 oodle. Chirping. Hello, boys. Hello, Hello Doc. Hello. Good evening, Doc. How would you like to whistle like that? Let's start with a plain whistle. 
any short while, if you practice daily, your whistle will sound more like this. And you can go up and down. With this lesson learned, you can whistle songs and even imitate birds. In the 1920s, the premier school of whistling was the uh, Los Angeles School of Artistic Whistling, founded by Agnes Woodward. And people came from around the country to attend her school. And, and then went out from there and set up their own schools of whistling. So that in the 1920s, I know of nine schools of whistling in the United States. Um, now, we want to have an opportunity for some who are here to get up individually if they would like and to do some whistling. If you want a little gentle critique or not, that's fine. Well, first of all, she's got to show us how she does that. What is that wonderful, low, you look like your mouth, are you puckering though? Are you in? Wow. Doing no. that in? No. I'm Breathing it out. There was a professor at New York University, Charles Gray Shaw. In 1931, he was interviewed by the New York Times and he said, Whistling is an unmistakable sign of the moron. We might call it part of his defense mechanism. No great or successful man ever whistles. Can you think of Einstein or Mussolini whistling? Well, then the newspapers got involved. They found out ex-president Woodrow Wilson was indeed a whistler. The Theodore Roosevelt, Charles Lindbergh, Mayor Jimmy Walker, Henry Ford, Rockefeller, they were all whistlers, refuting Professor Shaw. What year was it? He, he uttered these comments in 1931, at a time when there was a lot of popular whistling. I can't do that. It's the doodle the thing. Audience. Yeah, I can't do it. Well, I'm not. I got to practice. So we just. You have a nice sound, though. Thank you. I just found out that if I use certain muscles, that I can get high, high pitches. It, it's all, it is all in the. It's a lot in the jaw. You can go. Oh, you can go up there. Wow. Wow. You win. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about range. <laughs> Being a whistler since I was eight years old, I used to have a paper route, and they'd call me the whistling paper boy because I would hear me coming every time I was coming around the block. I'm actually uh, an alumni director in charge of alumni programs for a college in upstate New York. I'd like to update you on some great news for the college. This year was a banner year for the Ithaca Fund. Over 14,000 alumni, parents, and friends made unrivaled. I have a big band on the side, and we do a lot of weddings and things like that. And I play trombone and just try to keep myself busy with, uh, with music. I would love to place. It would be great to go back hometown and say, yeah, they thought that I was one of the best whistlers in the world. In the golden age of whistling, you did not have instantaneous communication. We're talking about an era when people got their news once a week at the movie theater through movie tone newsreels, which was telling you about something that happened days ago. A roar and a burst of flame has turned the ship into a flaming inferno. That was an age where people were, you know, whistling.
certainly uh, the pace was slower, you know, in, in decades gone by. You didn't have the same pressures, you didn't have the same, uh, you know, the speed. We waited for a letter to uh, get from one side of the country to the other, and that might take a few days. My heart burst into flame. Now with Lynn Jones, the boy who called for me at my front gate. It was a simpler time, and people were more self-reliant in terms of entertainment. You'll pop the question, and I'll be happy, I know. Then one will be fine to be mine, my little Lynn Jones. Washing your own car was like a, a, a like a weekend ritual and you know getting out the wax and the polish and, and, and everything else and people would whistle while they washed their cars that's when whistling was big and now people are in a hurry and lined up around the block for the brushless car wash. And now we've got email, and we've got chats, and all sorts of things that you know speed everything up. You'd think they'd have more time, but they have less time to kind of enjoy, you know, a simpler pleasure. ready to proceed. Thirty years ago, there was a warble heard round the world here in Lewisburg. And what we're doing here is influenced by the sound of the birds. And the birds really, I think, created the first music in the, in the universe. You could think of this contest as a flight or a volare of birds. Maybe this is a charm of goldfinches here, or an exultation of larks. And I'll tell you that probably all of the whistlers who are in the contest today are known in their community as the whistler. so pure in life is a just this pure little tone that comes out and and how you make it go up and down and 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 shade it ever so slightly is an expression of yourself and no one taught you that you learned it because you wanted to learn it so this, this is pure you didn't take years of piano lessons you didn't take years of trumpet you just learned it it's something you discovered actually that's what it is really people discover the whistler within them. In whistling circles, I am known for my pop skills in particular because of all these funky techniques 
that I have developed over time that effectively no one else uses. For Fat Boy Rag, you're incorporating that and that and the you know, all together. So you get what I call the wah-wah, the chirp, and then the lip whistle. Maybe we'll do pucker whistle and then powder whistle. How about that? When you do a whistle, it's just a pure sine wave. It's just, there's no little spikes off of it. It's just this pure wave. If you want to understand what whistling is, the first question is obviously, well, what is sound? Sound turns out to be pressure waves in the air. When you're whistling, the air rushes through, but then some of it, if you will, gets kind of curled up in here and forms these sort of vortices. And so these little ripples that occur uh, is what sets up the, the vibrations, which is the whistle. It's, you're just setting like a tea kettle. Air coming out, the, the, the steam coming out, it hits that hole and then it starts sets up these vortices. The air wants to, to go around the side of the edge of that. The edge is very key. Do you want a clean edge on a clean, clean whistle? One of the ways that I've been most personally moved by whistling is by reading people's obituaries. They'll say, you know, Aunt Jane used to love to whistle while she uh, pulled the weeds in the garden. They know of the presence of someone they like or they've loved because they could hear them whistling. Much like a smell, you know, certain perfume or lilies of the valley or evening in Paris would remind you of, of your great aunt. The whistling that your father did or your grandfather or your aunt. I think that it's one of the most beautiful ways that people have remembered family members and friends. It resonates deeply with people. There's something primal, I think, about whistling that is primal and comforting. And most people who learn whistling learn it because somebody they liked whistled.
Well, there are a lot of misperceptions about whistling. Uh, first of all, most people are not aware of it. That's the biggest problem. When people say to me, uh, what do you do? And I say, I'm a professional whistler. They say, uh, yeah, okay, what do you really do? You know, um, they think it's a joke. Why don't you lean over and whisper your secret to me? Does it have to do with the world of sports? Nope. But it does involve your, your body in some way. Yes. What, do you wave at people? Are you the best waver? <laughs> Is it some uh, instrument you play? Mm-hmm. It's not so much an instrument. Oh, really? <laughs> well, how dare I, yes. It's not so much an instrument. Is it a kazoo? No. Nope. Is it a piece of paper and a comb? Making a living from uh, whistling is probably impossible. Well, sorry, Terry. The fan is blowing my lips dry. Since whistling has fallen off the cultural radar scope, there are moments where we get frustrated where, uh, you know, if you know, someone's invited on The Tonight Show or, or David Letterman and you are the stupid human trick, you know, versus the artist. Actually, a few centuries ago, people were taking the art whistling very serious. There was this guy, Jacob van Eyck, the pieces he wrote for flute and recorder, he also whistled it. So, a few hundred years ago, they took it very serious. But th then, of course, there, there was no television, there was no radio, there was no entertainment. The, uh, <clears throat> for the, for the first section is pop. <laughs> I've got a little asthma. It's getting worse, so my whistling days are numbered. So that's why I felt like I better get here. I haven't been here for 10 years. <laughs> <coughs> but with the aid of a puffer and a cherry flavored cough drop, I'll be able to get up there and do it. But uh, I'm going to whistle um, Under Paris Skies for the popular. That's necessity, the first musical instrument. Music of the whistling comes from your heart. It comes from your mind. It comes from the, the, the feelings, the, the thoughts that pass by that you want to get out without walking around talking to yourself. So you whistle. Whistled in French. <laughs> <laughs> 
palpitations. <laughs> I almost didn't get through it. Right at the end, I started losing it. <sighs> but that's a pretty good song, isn't it? <sighs> and I was nervous that I wouldn't finish. I detected one little tiny error right near the end. Could you hear it? John Rutherford is our next whistler. He's from Michigan. He is going to do the Schubert Ave Maria. I lost a child to cancer, and um, somebody once asked me, how did you get through that, Barry? She was sick for two years uh, with this insidious disease that hits us and the rest of it. I whistled my way to work. It was one of my therapies. Actually, you can't be sad and whistle. If you're down and you start whistling, you whistle a happy tune. It's uplifting. If you're frightened or afraid. The whole notion of you know happy whistlers and whistling in the dark and, and whistling to whistling up courage, uh, whistling by, past a graveyard, all that is no question about it. When you're chewing on life's gristle, back grumble, give a whistle. And this'll help things turn out for the best. Aye. Always look on the bright side of life Always look on the light side of life If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten And that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing When you're feeling in the dumps be silly chumps, just purse your lips and whistle, that's the thing. The sea shanty, the work song, they turned it into almost a game that made work fun. While I'm fascinated by whistling and learning about how it's been used, I don't always enjoy whistling. Some whistling can be very Mm -hmm. Disconcerting. Dankeschön. Elsie. Fritz Lang's movie M, there's the whistling that foretells the approach of a murderer. But also, there have been real life whistlers who have committed crimes, or murderers who've been known for their whistling, a number of them. Whistling is against the law currently in Jacksonville, Florida, and Detroit, Michigan, and Los Angeles, and some other places as it can be used as a code for gangs. So there have been whistling in the annals of American crime and crime throughout the world. There's an airplane, the Corsair, which was called the Whistling Death. Whistling arrows were used. You could hear whistling and you'd be afraid. Whistling bombs, whistling bullets, whistling torpedoes. A lot of whistling has signaled a problem. Do you still get nervous? I get wired. I, I, really energetic. I, I, so yeah. you make it work for something good. Yeah, yeah. I, I do a lot of performing, so I don't oh, get myself I never afraid. Have. That's my problem. I burst it into tears a ago. Did you see me? You're the one whose microphone I didn't work the, the first time? I turned the microphone off <laughs> accidentally, which is probably a good, 
a good thing because my heart was beating so well, fast. You, you did just fine the second time. Yeah. I'm glad I got you. to catch it. Thank you. Good luck with your class. All right, and you too. I like to think of whistling as a holiday for lips. A breezy ballad, a wordless, windy aria. That's my idea of whistling. An eloquent, airy air. You didn't notice? Yes, this is truly an international whistler's convention because our next whistler is here from the Netherlands, a town called Mirlu, Netherlands. This is Hirt Chatru. He is going to do a uh, Dutch tune called Pusta Pusta. Hirt, come on up. up on the stage and uh, saw the audience and all of a sudden uh, I started to shiver oh, it's unbelievable <laughs> yeah I, I never experienced uh, that before that feeling I'm uh, sweaty now and hmm. most people can whistle you know some people whistle with their lips some whistle with their tongue some whistle with their hands like this, which I cannot do. Some whistle with two fingers for a cab. This competition here has only exhibited pucker whistlers. There are throat whistlers that get a sound not too unlike the silbo whistler in Spain and uh, the mariachi whistler in, in South America. I can only show you visually what it would look like, but it defies whistling because they look like they're speaking and they go... People talk about throat whistling and they talk about palatal whistling. Your teeth are here, and then there's this ridge that's behind your front teeth, right? This sort of fleshy thing there. So you take your tongue and you put it up against that, and you make a tiny hole there. I have no idea, honestly, how I learned palatal whistling. I've spoken with dentists, and they tell me that the space above 
uh, where my palate is, behind my alveolar ridge, is particularly high. I learned a double whistle from a kid my grade, and I traded him an auga. I showed him how to go like that, and then he showed me this double whistle. The whole, whole um, how do you call it? The hole in my mouth needs to be made bigger, and I don't have such a big mouth, so. Lower notes are, are difficult for me. I, maybe it's something like that, but it's it's more. The, I don't know much about the f physician physical aspects of the whistling. Some of it's done with the jaw. Some of it's done with the the palate. Um, but if I if you just look at my jaw as I go from low to high, you know, here's the break. You see how kind of the jaw shifts right there. So then, it, then you know, you're kind of. I wish I could. I wish I could figure out the mechanics, but I know that there's a shift. I have heard children under the age of one, infants, pucker up and blow a whistled note. Not a song, but a note. Kids had examples. You know, you had an ancestor who would whistle. My dad used to whistle. <laughs> and sometimes I start and sometimes my dad starts. It doesn't matter. The last few generations haven't had that. No, they have not had anybody whistling around them beyond maybe somebody calling for a taxi or a dog. I never could do that. I think that the transistor radio had a lot to do with that. Because now you had something fantastic. You know, you could put this in your hand and, you know, put a little ear plug in. You know, you could walk down the street and listen to that. And of course, that was unfortunately uh, sort of replaced with the boombox. And then after that, you have uh, Walkmen, and you have Discmen, and you have Watchmen, and you have cell phones with music in them, and iPods now, and games, and you know, or, you know, people don't entertain themselves. skit with a chicken singing and I could do a whistling thing too. I didn't they know. have judges sheets and things, but they might be able to handle it. So much of whistling is imitations of birds. All those night sounds, all that would be imitated and and used for, you know, the way in Indian, you know, they do it in those movies they always signal back, that was the, the Hollywood version of that, but those signals, they would learn to sim imitate that and, and communicate. And there are a lot of cultures around the world that communicate with whistling. En turc, Kouchkeuil signifie village des oiseaux, et ce langage et le chant des oiseaux de la vallée se confondent pour l'étranger. Voici une phrase parlée, puis sifflée plusieurs fois. Oh, 
Vers l'âge de 12 ans, lorsque leur denture est complète, les villageois sifflent en toutes circonstances dès que la distance les oblige à crier. Excuse me. You know, I can, you know, it's, that, that works. Lock the brakes of a taxi with a whistle. You know, holding the hand, scrip, scrip, taxi, doesn't carry. I think whistles carry because they're not in the frequency, competing frequencies. They're in a frequency that's higher, usually an octave or so above anything else around. The primary place that whistling was used as a language was in the island of Gomera, which is in the Canary Archipelago, the northern coast of Africa. And whistling, it carries better than speech. So people used whistling that island to communicate over a ridge. Domingo Darius has been using this ancient whistling language since he was a boy. The language is known as Silbo, communicating thousands of words. Domingo, please ask uh, Pablino to pick some of the flower over there, please. Maybe you could ask him to, uh, to do what all good uh, Spanish people do on the island of Gomera, and that is to take his afternoon siesta. People say, well, how can you speak with whistles? Well, I think if I do this, people think it's a calling a dog. Or if I say, I never really thought I would be a finalist. I woke up 5.30 in the morning. I was nervous. I'm nervous. That's a mental symptom. But it's going to be physical, uh, having a dry mouth. Hello. Yeah. Can I come in? Oh, yeah. Come on in. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We're in the final stretch. It's going to be high pressure, because now they're, they're going for the gold. And if across these five judges we end up with a tie, then they've got to come back with something new again. And, uh, and there'll be a heat, there'll be a runoff, just like in any major race, until we come down with that, that individual who does it best. What's your number, uh, Steve? What? Uh, when do you have to perform? Oh, what, uh, which, which one am I in the order? Yeah, um, that's what I'm Seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Some people think that's a lucky number. We should see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Are you nervous? Am I nervous? He's never nervous. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't really uh, get nervous per se. I get wired. Yeah. Wired. Wired. I don't. Look apprehensive. I don't understand what you mean then. Uh, wired. Wired means uh, keyed up. Right. Okay. The nerves do good for you. It's it's you it's it's, it's not like. You know, stage fright or, uh -huh. or, or, you know, petrification or, uh -huh. you know, disabling, you know, kind of nerves. Right. Yesterday I was, I was so nervous I could, could play a tune with my knees together. You, were, you, you, you couldn't tell it. The show is ready to go. Get, 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 get out on the... Change. Well, 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 well. Now we go into the finals for the 31st annual Whistler's Convention. Joe is going to do William Tell Overture, Rossini.
experiencing technical difficulties. We apologize for that, but having to have him get right in the middle of it and suddenly stop, it's, it's unfair. So let's have him come back. Okay. Uh, they, they asked me, to, would I like to finish it a cappella? I said, no, I don't want to finish it a cappella. <laughs> okay. you know, and they said, okay. oh, the judges said, we'll give him another chance to go. So. Okay. But oh, that's good you know, to hear. It's, that's kind good of, to hear. It's kind of a bummer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it, is. just waiting for the results now will be sufficiently nerve-wracking. Yeah. And waiting to find out, you know, did you win or you didn't? Did you, you, know, did you get a medal? Or you didn't. to announce that uh, we have a tie so these two whistlers are going to have to prepare another tune and they will be coming up again to be judged and that's going to be Hirt Chatru and Chris Allman. It doesn't necessarily mean a tie for first place it's a tie in their total number of points so if you guys are here. I've had several whistle-offs the adrenaline gets flowing and my desire to win really comes alive. Have, have water and music, we'll whistle. Really? Yeah. 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 Ik zit, ik zit ook al te denken, wat moet je dan normaal doen? Je hebt helemaal niks bij. Ja. Yeah. Uh, I'm in a tie with Chris Ullman, but I didn't prepare to be in a tie. So I'm now thinking of what tune will I'm going to do without accompanied music. Ja? Ja. I really don't know. Something of the Bee Gees. Like Real American. Like the Queen. The Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. Of Jimi Hendrix, Star Sprangled Banner, in, in the way Jimi Hendrix did it. Nee. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be nice. I don't. I, no, no, no. They're not gonna like that. Oh. How does the American dinner uh, go? The American uh, uh, anthem. And then come up with a tear. Dat ga ik doen. Leuk. Ja. And we're ready to go. But first we have to break our tie. So let's have Chris Ullman, who is here from Alexandria, Virginia. His backup music is the big band Voodoo Daddy. Chris Ullman. Chateau, the tie-breaking piece. He is going to do a Dutch tribute to America. He is going to do the national anthem. Is that correct? The national anthem. I found a quote by John Audubon, who was a, a naturalist, and he said this, The woods would be very silent if no birds sang there except those who sang best. So what he said was, lots of whistling makes the sound of the woods beautiful. was this little little box you could put everyone in this little box it's not it's this huge uh, uh, sort of plane of people whistling you know is a good cure for depression really my theory it's like a, a friend that is always there with you well you could say it's 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 uh, deviant behavior maybe I whistle all the time I whistle when I do my dishes and one of my neighbors commented she said when she hears the whistling she knows everything is right with the world Actually, what happens when you're whistling, it turns out, you set up the vibrations here in the, using this mechanism. Being able to experience a moment and whistle to pull myself away from the moment. 
third place trophy, there is actually a tie between Graham Stewart and Chris Ullman. Both of you guys come on up. Third place. Second place international grand champion goes to Steve Hurts. First place female grand champion for 2004, Sandra Hensler. First place grand champion, Hirt Chateau. Remember one thing, the international language for the Lord is whistling. Thank Wonderful. you. Thanks very much. That was the most exquisite national anthem I've ever heard done before. At least they recognized it. <laughs> you know, you're going to have trouble getting through customs. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. If they don't like guys taking stuff out no, of the United States, no, they'll no. think you're a terrorist. Yeah, yeah. And this okay. guy here, what a chip. Yeah. What a yeah. chip. Hi, yeah. Steve. Anyway. The sigh of relief was yeah. heaved. Yeah, no, it's great. This guy has been a wonderful ambassador, and we're expecting you to do the same. I know. Talk it up. Get the rest of Europe over I here. I will. Okay, I will. cheers. <laughs> Now I gotta pack my goods and go home. <laughs> de Black Horse van ons land. Niemand kan kennen, maar hij toch met de prijzen van Dorsen. Ik heb het over. Geert Chateau. Ja. Hoi. Oh, ja. Ik ben echt afgevaard. Is hij dan mee bezig? De Nederlander Geert Chateau is er wel heel goed in. Hij heeft zelfs een wereldkampioenschap kunst fluit in Amerika. De hele buurt is apatros. Iedereen woont immers bij een wereldkampioen in de straat. De buurgenoten willen wel wat van. Yeah. 